Assalamu alaikum, welcome to episode 260 of Freshly Grounded. This episode is with Sohel from a podcast called Fadinkum <laughs> in Australia, uh, which you guys may or may not have seen. We came across these guys, uh, they played the game uh, on their podcast, and then Sohel ended up being in the UK on vacation and gave us a message and said, We're here, I'm here, I uh, would love to meet up. And I said, Well, why not do a podcast? And so we ended up doing an episode together. Lovely brother. Uh, we spoke about uh, money, we spoke about uh, the podcast in Australia, we spoke about Australian culture, and uh, a bunch of other things. It was lovely having Sohel on, and uh, I think you guys will really enjoy this episode. Um, I two one or two things I was going to mention in the intro. Yeah, one of them you can probably hear. I'm quite bunged up. Uh, I'm kind of liking my voice, to be honest. While it's not well, uh, that's probably the one thing I would like to keep. But other than that, um, you could you'll be able to hear it for the podcast. So uh, I don't have COVID. Alhamdulillah, I've been testing myself uh, for the last three days, and um, we've been making sure to keep as many precautions as we can. And uh, but you can hear I'm a bit bunged up throughout the episode. Secondly. Uh, if you like Freshly Grounded and the kind of stuff that we produce, then please do check out Patreon, p a t r e o n dot com forward slash Freshly Grounded. Uh, you get a few benefits like extra uh, content and, and early episodes. We are planning right now. We're in the phase of literally planning brand new content that's going to be just for Patreon. Uh, we're just figuring out the uh, logistics for that and, and what we're going to do and, and planning things out for that. Uh, but we are planning to use that a lot more because we do want Patreon to be kind of a centralized way that we can uh, provide content and also be able to uh, sustain freshly grounded and, and grow it so if you if you like what we do uh, do check out our patreon.com for slash freshly grounded and support us from five pounds a month with that being said this is episode 260 of freshly grounded with sahel abdo enjoy it <laughs> and welcome to a freshly grounded the brand new podcast well, it's not exactly brand new anymore is it Welcome to Freshly Grounded, the podcast. That's better. Created by best friends, Faisal and Sam. Huh? Welcome, I said, welcome to Freshly Grounded. After that bit. Created by... After that bit. Best friends, Faisal and Sam. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Alhamdulillah yourself. Yeah, good man. How does it feel? Surreal, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's not gonna sink in like I was telling my my, my boy Taha, bro. Like things don't sink in until two weeks later for me. Like, oh like, man. I was on fresh again. Okay. Now for, for <laughs> us, it's an honor, man. You need to give me your fair income. What fair? Well, that exactly. one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah bro, and I now I know what it means as I well. So. Bro. No, alhamdulillah, bro. Alhamdulillah. That, that was actually the other brother ages ago when we used to have him on the podcast and he, for personal reasons he left okay but um when he used to be on the podcast he, he i made him do it specifically because that guy can switch accents like no one you know mashallah so shout is, out is that your intro that's our that's our intro yeah how'd it go so fair income i've like heard that. it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it yeah that's it that's, that's a good intro that's a very good intro it's like audio logos like i was doing like studies because like, i'm studying marketing and stuff they talk about like audio logos so things that are going to be like mementos for people that whenever they perceive a word or a brand or something like that bang this is certain this is the this is the thing that's associated with it so like the subway mind the gap between the train and the platform yeah straight away hits you you know uh, Gary V's big on that. He's uh, he has a, I think he called it like a sound wave or a sound pop. I can't remember. But his, if you look at Gary V video, Gary V video at the beginning of every video, after he, you know, he has like a two second preview, yeah. and then there's a sound. It's like a pop, mm. and then it carries on. And the idea is that eventually you'll associate that. So he's big on that sound logo thing. Definitely, bro. Subconsciously things work. You know, like mm. um. Oh, you didn't have Woolworths here. Oh, we you used to have Woolworths. Woolworths. No, we used to. Oh, Woolworths was huge here, and yeah. then they got they got um, closed down. Uh, they went into uh, like bankruptcy or whatever. Yeah. So they went into a two horse race then, because it's only them and Coles in 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 Melbourne or in oh, Australia. Really? Yeah. So they they have like dun, 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 dun. you know, and automatically ah. when you hear that, you're like, oh wait, did I forget my groceries? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's what. Yeah, it there is. are some big ones. I'm trying to think of what. Uh, obviously, Netflix have got theirs. Like, it's like boom, like that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's subhanAllah. It's important, yeah. It's everything's so, it's so like exact and specific. They know what they're doing yeah. subconsciously. That's interesting because we don't have one. 
Sure. We just have a really long intro. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. No. We changed that actually recently, like a few months back when Sam was here, we changed it because it used to go, everyone's like, oh, I'll change the intro, but I like it. Yeah. So I'm like, no. But what I did do is, it used to say something like, uh, welcome to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast with best friends, Fraser and Sam. Yep. And then it's changed now because we re-recorded parts of it and then we like moved it so it still sounds exactly the same. We used old parts and new parts. And so now it says, welcome to a brand new podcast. And then Sam says, it's not brand new anymore. And then he said, we say, uh, now we say created by Best Friends Fraser Sam because Sam and I created it, but Sam's no longer a regular host. Oh, okay, and so yeah. there was always that like, like you know, it says like by Best Friends Fraser Sam, but then everyone's like, where's Sam? So yeah. <laughs> uh, we changed it a bit, but we kept the gist of it. I yeah, like it too yeah. much. Peer pressure got to you, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel you, man. All right, bro. I've got a question for you. I thought that'd be a good question to 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 dive right into. I was listening to a podcast recently, and they asked this question. I thought it was a good question to actually ask somebody. And the question was, what would you do if you had Jeff Bezos money? And it was Brian Callen who responded or who was talking about it. And he yeah. said that, you know, he said the super rich, they become so rich that uh, the only thing left for them to do is things like go to space. Right. Yeah. And he, which he, which he <laughs> says is, is just silly. Right. And he put it into con with the context that he put it into. I just found hilarious. He said, imagine being Jeff Bezos. You have so much money now that. Now all your now your pastime is to is to go all the way up in a straight line <laughs> and come back down. That's what he's paying lots oh of money to do. God, and and he went with William Shatner, obviously, who yeah. is in 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 Jeff Bezos's childhood. He would have been he was like what was he Captain uh, Cook, Cook think, yeah. right? So in Jeff Bezos's like childhood. That was like the star. Yeah. So he's just living his child dream. Yeah, as like, yeah. I'm going to space with Captain. <laughs> like he just because you just have that much money. To swear, I read something actually that said if he's what's what's Jeff Bezos's net worth? If I ask, can you look it up? He lost half of it anyway to his missus. Oh yeah, he got a divorce. But I heard that was quite bitter actually. Yeah, because I think like I heard something like she um, had naturally had some shares in Amazon, and she rather than like cashing in on all of her assets or something when they got divorced she actually kept like a a decision makers like uh portion of the nah. assets so that, so that she always has a hold of the company something like that i don't know if that's rumored that's proper bitter that um, is proper bitter <laughs> it's 201.7 billion there you go us dollars 200 and what 201.7 billion 200 so call it 200 billion yeah so i read something that someone said so if so that's obviously what his assets are worth. That doesn't mean that's what he's got in his bank. But let's say, for example, Jeff Bezos sold all his assets. So he has that in the bank now. Yeah. He could give every single person in the world a billion dollars and still have a hundred and... Uh, how many people is it? hundred and ninety three. Two really? billion dollars. There's eight billion people in the world. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, a million, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Why not a billion? Because, because it's only. You can only give it to two hundred people. people. <laughs> no. no, no. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's Sorry, only a million. Of them. Yeah, a yeah. million. <laughs> <laughs> I've had I've had a hell of like that before. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my math is really bad. Uh, it's funny because my, well, my wife has a math degree, so I should actually be better. Uh, yeah, a million <coughs> pounds, dollars. But obviously, if he did give a million dollars to everybody in the world, yeah. then inflation it, it wouldn't. Well, all of a sudden, like a, a the standard is a million. Pounds, yeah. yeah, and so oh, a really? car now, which is. Five thousand pounds would cost two hundred thousand pounds or whatever, so it wouldn't work. So you can't be was mad that, at him. But was that, yeah. was that for Jeff Bezos or was that for uh, Elon Musk? No, I read that about Jeff Bezos, but I'm sure there's one about Elon Musk. So if you had Jeff Bezos money, what would you be doing? You know, it's funny. I have to be politically correct with this answer. No, you don't. I don't have to be. Okay, yeah. can we cut the camera off for a second? <laughs> nah, honestly. Let's assume that you're giving a lot to charity and you're building all these beautiful schools. Let's actually, no. Answer how you will. Actually, I couldn't assume that of you. Maybe yeah. you just keep it. all. So what would you do, even the charity no, no. stuff? I obviously, yeah, like, I'd make sure that I can do as much good with it as possible, you know? But the one thing that I'd do, which would probably only, if I had 217 billion, would only take a little fraction, would buy Chelsea Football Club. Yeah. Straight out. Like, that's the first thing that I would do. I would go, listen, <coughs> Roman Abramovich. But you support Liverpool. I'm a Chelsea supporter. You were wearing a Liverpool scarf. I was at an Anfield game, that's why. Ah. <laughs> I needed the neck warmer ah. and I couldn't just stop putting on a mask because my ears would just get burnt from that, fine, fine, that fine. mask thing. But bro. You went to a match? Yeah. Oh, amazing. It was an amazing experience. I can imagine because you're obviously a big fan. 
of yeah no no not Liverpool but no, but football, <laughs> yeah, football yeah 100% like I even love football like I love Liverpool's style of play okay because it's basically they call it heavy metal football Fine. so it's like it's very attacking so it's not like you're going to go and watch a you know new little game and everyone's just passing it around the back and stuff like Klopp's put them in put it into them that hey start moving you know like get it forward like and he even calls it he's like it's like football is entertainment at the end of the day it's not life or death he's like people come here pay their money their hard-earned cash to see a show let's give them a show you know so that's why i love him but that and i love liverpool as my like my second favorite team but i would buy chelsea fine so you buy you bought chelsea yep i think it's uh i was speaking to somebody about this and i think that it's very hard to buy a football club because well let's say for example you buy a football club you'd have to now ensure that no alcohol is sold in the stadium yeah because obviously that's just our moral exactly yeah. and so <laughs> Fans would hate you, yeah. And but you'd have to do that. Uh, that's always what comes to mind. Then you have to make sure that no sponsors for like betting companies and stuff. It'd be really bad for business it would. if you bought a football club, wouldn't it? You'd just get. <laughs> but I guess if you got all that money, you don't need to profit off it. Hundred yeah. percent. Like that's 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 the thing. It's like it's like something that I fulfilled as a child. Like yeah, yeah. like Bezos. Like, you know, we're going down the childhood fantasies and stuff like that. I'm thinking. What did I love more than anything when I was younger, you know? Yeah, and it would cool. be that. And then I'd also probably purchase the MCG. What's that? The the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Okay. It's like the massive stadium in the in the middle of Melbourne. Okay. The only reason why is because I could never get a good seat at a grand final, ever. You know? And I'm going to get every seat in that yeah. area. Listen, none of you it. Get out. <laughs> Just get out. <laughs> I'm watching the grand final by myself. <laughs> it's funny though, because having that much money is... Uh, it, it just... It's, it would be such a big problem. Mm. Who would want that problem? Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean, yeah. like everybody obviously wants money, right? Like a little bit of the dunya never hurt anybody. You know what I mean, like, but but that much money, yeah, it, it just doesn't feel right. Yep, it's such a responsibility, especially knowing that we're going to be questioned on every penny that we spend. Oh. Like how. I would be so confused. Like, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Like, how do I sign up for Allah with this much? What's the best way I can do it? You know, they're, they're, actually, one of our teachers mentioned this story of, a, like, one of our pious predecessors. I can't remember who it was. Maybe maybe his name was, like, Yahya something. <laughs> I love it. No, I don't think. Ah. Oh. He's really famous pious predecessor. And he was known to be, like, one of the wealthiest. Mm. And But the way he was... He would like um, I can't remember now, but like he would, he gave so basically he gave so much of it away that he was almost had nothing basically, and so you think you would like to think that you would be like that, but no nah, man, you hear it'd of be like, so hard to be that level of discipline, wouldn't it? You hear of like Uthman and you yeah. hear the way he used to just give and give and give and give and give and stuff like that, and you know you also hear about like Abu Bakr giving a hundred percent of his wealth away, and exactly, saying, you exactly. know, and you're like, <laughs> ding, sorry, bro. sorry, the wealthiest. No, not him. I, I have heard of, I heard of him, but no, it wasn't him. It was like uh, like one of the early generations of Muslims. Mm. But yeah, bro, like you see that like the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to live poor. Yes. You know, all of the Sahaba, like not all of them, but majority of them, they didn't really like they didn't see wealth as a as a thing that they cared about too much. So for me, it's like when I see it, I'm like. Like you need, cause we get caught up in the dunya a we lot, do. you know. Like day to day, like even when you're just around your mates and you just start <laughs> hearing people talk about, you know, like money and stuff like that. And oh, bro, did you hear Bitcoin and and crypto and this is what's going on and blah blah. blah and you're like, I'm trying to be the complete opposite of that. I'm trying to not be concerned about funds and stuff like that too much. So for me, it's it's very difficult. It's like it's like a it's like a battle I, I wage against myself to make sure that I'm not too concerned about money, so I don't become a miser, you know? Because that's that's a, that's like a massive sin, like being a miser, you know? And yeah, bro, it's it's very difficult, especially like I don't want to like, but I'm pretty well off, alhamdulillah, at home, you know? Like my family's doing decent, alhamdulillah. So for me, it's like, mashallah. So it, for me, it's like. Like, do I let it get to my head? Do I go out of go out of my way to do extravagant things? Do I go and purchase? Because I'm, I'm a massive sneakerhead as well. Do I go and buy like hundred thousand dollars? Like, like there's ten thousand dollar crepes, you know, and stuff like I said crepes. Ten thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar sneakers. <laughs> yeah, bro. But um, he's taking the UK slang. Bro. That's what I'm saying. I heard it too much now. <laughs> but yeah, so do I go and purchase all these things and accumulate stuff and then? 
Like, for example, yeah, I have a massive football kit collection, yeah? Like, it's huge. Like, it's like maybe 60, 50 football kits in the collection. Wow. Yeah? And then I looked at it during lockdown and I go, how many of these have I worn in the past, what, six months? I haven't worn nothing, mm. you know? And even if I was to wear one every day for the next 60 days, like, what did I get out of it, you know? <laughs> it's, not, it's not too amazing for me, but <laughs> alhamdulillah. Bro. It's a definitely a hard balance to have, though, because you, uh, I, 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 I often would say that I want to be that guy. I, there's two things I, I, I catch myself saying. One of them is that I would, I, I plan to run my car down until I don't, uh, yeah. until, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it doesn't work for me anymore. Yeah. But, you know, if, if, with that being said, I'm also, if I, because in terms of dream cars, I think that the, I don't think I'll ever get it, even if I can, because I, I'd have to check myself. Mm. However, um, I, I'd say a Porsche Panamera, I really like the idea of it because it's it's five door Porsche. <laughs> yeah. And so you can fit your kids in it and everything. So I think <laughs> a Porsche Panamera would be perfect. The child lock? So, you get the child <laughs> lock and you fit the car seat. So it's best of both worlds, right? Uh, okay. But, um, but I, I, yeah. So my point is, is if I had the money for that, I, I would find it hard to stick to my uh, my word of of saying, oh, I'm, I'm just going to run my car, car down. Yeah. So it's it, it's one of those ones where you like to think that you're more like quote unquote righteous than perhaps you actually are. Yeah. Uh, not that it's haram to buy a Panamera or or, or, or to spend money, but. I'm, I, I, th that's one of the things that I would often say is that I plan to run my car down because I don't, bro, my car has everything I could possibly need in exactly, a car. Yeah. A long umbilic, bro. <laughs> like, sure. boot space, it's got the, like, uh, the, 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 the sensors at the front, the sensors at the, everything I need. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, the only reason I would upgrade my car would only be for flex. Exactly. That's the only reason. Yeah. Mm. There's, I couldn't even say it's because I need to fit another, like, I need um, more space for this. I can fit everything in there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Unless Allah blesses me with another kid, maybe. Like, that's a reasonable Inshallah, because yeah. you would have to, there's not enough space for another car seat now. So, uh, that's one thing. And the other thing I would say is that uh, I would love to be that guy who, uh, if I was wealthy enough, yeah. had a really nice house on the inside, but it looked really ugly on the outside <laughs> <laughs> so that nobody knows. That's such a like, I don't know if that's because I'm trying to be righteous or if that's because I'm like scared of theft. But <laughs> I, 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 I like the idea of like, I like the idea of like keeping a secret of like, you know, it being amazing on the inside. Yeah. Uh, so all of these things, but yeah, I, I think like, it's dangerous because if you do have a level of wealth where you can start becoming really extravagant, yeah. you would go back on, on your word on a lot of the things that you think that you wouldn't. You do you justify it very easily. Yeah, I, I, I find myself doing that. Like oh, I, I like for example, I'm not the, one thing I'm really, really grateful to Allah for is that I'm I'm not a trainer guy and I'm not a a a, a car guy, right? Yeah. I'm grateful because they're expensive habits, right? Uh, especially the car thing. Yeah. I I, don't, I have loads of friends who are car guys, and I'm just feel when I see them, I just feel so grateful that it doesn't like <laughs> you know tickle me how it does other people yeah, yeah, because yeah. otherwise I'll be like just always like just struggling financially. And then the trainer thing as well. However, I do find that sometimes I'll like I look I look at how many trainers I have. And I think I don't actually need that many so like, am i falling yeah am i falling into that now so it's just constantly trying to check yourself isn't it 100 percent, 100 percent. um i was listening i was watching a live from do you know lupe fiasco yeah 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 so um lupe fiasco is doing a live and um they were asking him like what is wrong with kanye west like what's what's wrong with this guy like why is he losing it and whatever and he goes like he's gone crazy for one reason he goes when you get to a certain pay grade you're in a certain bracket you start to lose it yeah. You know, he yeah. goes, cause you've seen things that nobody's ever seen. Yeah. He goes, you've been to parties, you've been around people. You've, you know, you've experienced things that not, if any, like, like the smallest percentage of human beings ever on this earth have ever experienced, you know, like he goes, um, he goes like, like you, you'll be at a party, for example, and he goes, they'll they'll come to you and they'll show you like a plate of food and they'll go, oh, we cut one of these one every, once every six years, you know, and it'll be like, it'll be like, like that that can mess you up you know that can like change your whole like outlook on life and perspective on yourself and people around you change too because you start to like elevate to a different pay grade you know and for them they like they have a saying it's called like different levels different devils you know yeah. this is what it is and I, I, that, that's so true I, one of the hardest things i think for us to get uh, to fathom is that everybody has problems 
and you look at other people's lives and you sometimes think, well, I would love to be in that person's shoes. Uh, Jeff Bezos is a perfect example, oh, actually. But when you see that he's gone through such an ugly divorce and uh, now the guy is so bored, he's trying to like just go up in the air. and I, <laughs> like, like, Because he's not, I don't even think, he's doing it for space. I, think, I don't think he's doing it, I, I love his best, but anyway. If you should try elevate another way. Yeah, you, you, I think the point is, is that like even all of the billions that he has, we have something that's worth so much more, which is invaluable, which is Islam, right? And we should, we, we should be so grateful for. Mm. And, uh, and, and it's that, it's like, it's so hard to understand that other people have all other people have problems because the world is not perfect yeah. I, I, I've said it a few times on this podcast before but one of my favourite quotes is that everybody knows that money doesn't buy happiness but everyone wants to find out for themselves mm -hmm. which is just so true yeah that's that that saying like the fool learns from his own mistakes yeah. but the, the, the smarter person obviously learns from others yeah you know it's like we, we go through life thinking, you know what, oh, that's not, yeah, oh, I don't really fall for that stuff myself, you know, for example, like somebody. Because we like to think we're white, you know, we are, yeah. don't yeah. Like, you, oh, I can put myself in this, yeah. in this fitna place, you know, and this, this will strengthen my man. Nah, because it don't work, yeah. you know. <laughs> like, I've, like, I've heard of guys that tell me like, because like, listen, this isn't, this isn't the thing to do, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be going around doing certain things with certain people at a certain place, you know. And then they'll look at you and they'll go, nah, because, you know, I pray, I, I'm good. Iman-wise, I khof Allah, I'm, I'm scared of God. I'll take care of myself, you know. And then you get into the situation where they come to you maybe f four or five weeks later, six weeks later, well, are you all right? And I can't stop now, you know. And then what do you do then? Like, you're like, I told you, you can't say, I told you so. You just tell them, listen, the only way is to cut it off. Yeah, the, for the friend, like uh, being around people who are not a good influence on you, I don't think there's a more important thing in this entire world than be then then distancing you distancing yourself from from bad friends 100%. i don't think there's a more important thing 100%. and i it's, it can't be a surprise that how much emphasis in the seerah there is on the sahaba like there's so much we know about sahaba. what were the sahaba they were the companions of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. why when we had to learn about our religion did we have to have a messenger who so much emphasis was on companionship yep. it's just it, it just boggles me so I think the worst thing a person could do is remain in a bad circle of friends. Even one one uh, bad friend yep. is enough. And uh, you see so much goodness from leaving. Even if you think that you don't. Because one quote really, really impacted me early on in my journey. Somebody said to me that the shaitan's got time. Yes. <laughs> and it just boggled me. Well. He said, he doesn't care when you like uh, disobey Allah. Yep. He has got all the time. He'll wait for ages so you won't necessarily feel it like no this is wrong you got it, 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 like one step after another step Might, maybe one day you'll go two steps back and you come forward but the point is is that he's got until you die mm -hmm. he's chilling yep. he's seen many people you know I mean? so but that that hit me i thought like your 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 enemy is someone who is uh in some ways very patient with that stuff and mm -hmm. so that's scary because uh, what that means is is that even when you think uh, you're doing fine. There's someone plotting against you, yeah. and so you have to be active all the time. And so, in fact, somebody actually said that you're never going, you're never standing still. Where did I see this? I don't know. You might have heard it. Ah, oh, someone said this on social media a few months ago. And me. They said you're never standing still. You're either going forward or you're going backwards. Because if you're standing still, the shaitan's pulling you, mm. right? And so standing still isn't a thing that exists. Yeah. You're either increasing your knowledge or you're trying to become all righteous or you're, uh, you're, you're, you're being pulled back. SubhanAllah. That's you're so always true. moving. That is so true. Either forward or back. You can't because they say that the devil loves an idle mind, you know? Yeah. Yes, it's the truth. Like right. sometimes you sit there and you go to yourself, okay, yeah, I just want to chill for today, you know? So yeah. you sit by yourself and whatever. If you've, yeah. like, if you've ever sat there with yourself and gone, okay, <coughs> like wow what, what's, what, what's going on right now Like subhanAllah Like a lot of thoughts Run through your head yeah. And you, you just have to Deal with those sort of things That's why they tell you You keep busy yeah. Especially at a young age Because yeah. you've got a lot of energy And you've got a lot of time And like you were saying bro Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Gave the shaitan Until the end of time yeah. You know So he's got nothing but time We've got what If we're lucky 80 years 100 years here So He's like bro, you're, you're like You're the chum change to me You know yeah. You guys here You're chum change And you wait for you On the right path yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he does He waits for us To slip up While we're on the right path So Like you were saying bro If we don't consistently Check ourselves And our intentions And what we're doing Consistently bro It's It's gonna be a long one For us yeah, man definitely. Because Barsisa bro uh, Let's talk about Fair Dinkum 
All right, let's go. Uh, <laughs> because you guys, uh, yeah, that's kind of how we got in touch is uh, we saw you guys playing the game on the episode. Thank you so much, by the way, for oh, doing that. And um, you guys looked like you had a great time uh, getting to know each other on the game. Yeah. And um, and then you obviously was in the, in the UK on vac- vacation. And you gave me a, a DM and said, we'd love you to, to meet up. So... I thought, why not catch up on podcast? In fact, this is probably the time I can give you the most time because we went for coffee. It'd be <laughs> 10 minutes, this, that, that. So it's actually quite nice because we get an episode out of it. But really, we selfishly get to have a conversation. So how did Fair Income start and uh, and uh, what's the intention behind it? Okay, alhamdulillah. So um, I'll start with the intention because the story of the actual... How we met and how it ended up coming to be was... And let us know why it's called Fair Income as well because okay, I no, asked no, you that way. Yeah. <laughs> so Fair Income is basically a slang word for like, oh, okay, that's amazing, you know? Oh, that's... Oh, fair income, you know, like like fair play, fair yeah, enough. fair play, fair enough, yeah, exactly. So, um, the way we, um, the intention behind it is basically, um, we wanted to benefit from talking to people who have the knowledge <laughs> and who have, you know, like they have something, they have something to offer, not only the community but us, you know, for for our own sake, inshallah. So we develop as human beings, yeah. So the best thing for us was, hang, we go, hang on, why don't we do that all the while sharing that with people as well. So not only do we, if we, for example, get a sheikh on or we get some sort of benefit from it, inshallah, somebody changes their life for the right direction, we can benefit from that akhira-wise and dunya, inshallah, if possible, you know? And um, so the whole point was to do things that we enjoyed doing and having fun while doing it, but then all the while, you know, like developing as human beings because that's all we can do. If you're not growing, you're dying, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, and um, the way we met, subhanAllah, was that there's a, there's a university at, in Melbourne called La Trobe. Okay. So at La Trobe Uni, um, we weren't actually really close. Like, we were like maybe like we know of each other and everyone was like chilling and serving. So me and the initial brother Abshir were, were close at the time. So he left the podcast. But me and Abshir were very close at the time. And then um, uh, I knew Abdi Wali through, through some boys. I met him uh, at an event and then we, we, we got close and whatever it is. And then I told him like, oh yeah, I had... Like I thought about doing a podcast because at the time I was doing media studies at, at La Trobe. That was my undergraduate degree. And um, so I got him, yeah, I was thinking about doing a podcast on my ones, you know? Like I wanted to just do it. I don't know why, but I just felt like it'd be something I'd be interested in doing. And then he goes, okay, no worries. If you need any help or anything like that, I'll come through, I'll help you out, inshallah. Just let me know because I'd love to be involved. Like, no worries, inshallah, bro. And then randomly he goes to me, hey, I've got an idea. There's two other boys that want to start the podcast and he told me they're Ali and Ashraf. They're the brothers. When was this? When was your first episode? Um, our first episode was 2018 wow, okay, or 19. Cool. Amazing, amazing. It was, it was like, we have some, like, you know, you have some background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have some background footage that it never I ever know. surfaced. I know. <laughs> so we have some terrible footage of us at like, at La Trobe. And there was, we had phones in, uh, we had a triangle table. So we had phones on either corner. And then we were just doing recordings and we were eating chewies and we were no, just talking man. absolute rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> but then we, we started developing We're like okay We need to start getting organised And subhanAllah um, What had happened was we, we started to get A lot more closer As we started like Developing our content And we, we just decided Okay How do we actually give something That's palatable to people You know And we're like We have to get Come on We have, we have to get equipment So we decided to purchase the equipment We created the studio uh, Initially if you see the, the, the early days we were like in a room where it was just, it was basically the bed is here, yeah, <laughs> the walls there. Ah, oh, bro, we should be full of that, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so alhamdulillah, we, we, went through, we went through that whole stage and and then um, we got to where we are now, alhamdulillah, which is like somewhat consistent content. And obviously we're going to develop into something greater. So like vlogs and other content like yeah, we were talking yeah. about beforehand because YouTube is not really a podcasting platform. How, how, how did you get all the, is, uh, is, um, Amazon, uh, like as prevalent there as it is in kind of the U- UK and the yeah, US, yeah. is that the best way to order all of that kind of stuff? Um, we didn't order from Amazon. We, initially, we went to, like, we had no clue about this stuff, you know? We had zero, zero knowledge about, like, just audio, audio listening and, and cameras and stuff like that. So we decided to go to experts at stores okay you know that's, so we bad. Went to that's the always <laughs> bad idea i know very real that's seem to yeah. buy the most expensive equipment <laughs> but what, what we'll, do you have uh we have road mics that were um you know the not the joe rogan ones the ones just below them 
So Joe Rogan uses a short SM7B. Yes, say so that. Do you guys have short <laughs> or do you have road? We have road. Okay. Yeah. So these I, are road. These are road. Yeah. yeah. So there were they um I don't know the the ones you have to really talk into the microphone right, like right, that. Right, right. But I'm not too sure what the names are because it gets very ticky. And then what do you record into? Um, we record into that um, the the road the massive oh nice the, the podcast yeah, thing yeah, yeah that's you really can cool press the buttons and stuff yeah, like that on yeah. it, yeah. we, we would have got that actually had we um, started a bit later because that came about I think just a couple of years ago but it looks really cool alhamdulillah yeah, yeah. Like, I, I wanted to get I would love to geek out with him about the podcasting stuff but I've got no clue what yeah, the names yeah. are so so actually you guys started it you and uh, Ashraf. Me and me and Abdi Wali. Abdi Wali. Yeah, okay. like, but in all honesty, I think it was a group decision. Fine. Like everybody had a part to play in okay. it. Okay. Just being politically correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was all me. It was yeah, all yeah, me. Yeah. But no, that no, um, yeah, so uh, it came from a thought. Subhanallah, everything Amazing. comes from a thought. Yeah, you know? of course, of course, of course. But yeah, alhamdulillah, we just ex- uh, put action to it and, and then still develop. How's life in Australia? Do you guys? What we see from this end is when I think Australia, I think One Path Network, <laughs> Sunny Bill Williams. <laughs> Uh, kangaroos <laughs> <laughs> So the area that we live in Is So we live in the west side uh, I live in the west side of Melbourne So okay. we don't really see too many kangaroos Because right. you have to kind of go inland more So towards the north um, When there starts to become empty ranges And empty fields and stuff You'll just see random kangaroos Bouncing everywhere bro Wow I'm telling you It's, it's hilarious Because it's like main roads And it's like okay, They're quite dangerous aren't they Bro huge You they, see these videos of like They're like <sighs> Beating up people. Uh, Have you seen it? <laughs> you see the guy clocked out. Yeah. <laughs> he ended up knocking. <laughs> knocking out a kangaroo. That went viral. Kangaroo, yeah, yeah, bro. It was crazy. Ago. But um, now nah, you want to mess with them because they're like extremely strong. <laughs> extremely yeah, strong. Not that I've got into a punch on with any of them, but. No, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen. Some of them look jacked. They're huge. Yeah. They actually are. Like there was, um, because my dad does fruit veg deliveries. So he has to go to Epping Market. Okay. Epping is kind of more inwards, so it's in the north. And, um, we saw this guy's bonnet of his of his like it's a it's a truck, it's like basically a truck and it has a bull bar as well, so it has like the extra yeah, layering right, okay, of protection. Fine, fine, fine. It's dented in the bull bar and the front of his bonnet as well. Wow. After he hit it, because it was it was crossing the road, he had no clue what was going on. So it, they're that mashallah, they're that big. Do, so do they only exist in Australia? I don't know. I wouldn't. I think so. I'm fine. pretty sure they do. Maybe in a zoo somewhere else, but. <laughs> But that's about natural. it. Yeah, yeah, the kangaroos. Are and what's the weather like? Is it always nice? Honestly, no. Melbourne, Melbourne, they call it they call it the city of four seasons in a day. Oh really? So we have like it will be the most random thing. You wake up in the morning, it's just gloomy. Really? So gloomy. The sun comes out and it'll start raining. No way. And then it'll become windy in the afternoon. You go to sleep and you wake up the next morning, it's like sunny and it's twenty wow. degrees again. And you're like, what just what, <laughs> what just happened? What's you know? Ramadan like these days? Like these these few years? Has it been so, quite long or so short? easy? We really? had like until five thirty, I think it was to eat. Yeah, and then what time do you open uh, for? Oh no no, T- to eat we had until like six a.m. Then, yeah, <gasps> and then five thirty. And then five thirty wow. p.m. We 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 iftar, Yeah, is so nowadays, nowadays yes. Because oh, te- technically, is it? Sorry, I just hit the mic. Technically, mm-hmm. is it s- it's summer in Australia right now? Right now, yes, bro. Everyone's burning in Australia. That's so <laughs> weird. Like, you know, for you guys, obviously, that's normal. But for us to think that in December it's summer, it just feels so yeah. odd. I was laughing because yesterday apparently was a it was a warm day for you guys. Oh, bro, yeah, it's been uh, quite rough. <laughs> Do you know what rough I mean? This year's been rough. It was twelve yeah. degrees. Me and him were dressed in puffer jackets and we're yeah, walking this around. Rough. This year's rough. <laughs> yeah. us, I bet that's the first time Taha you've had to get a woolly hat out since you've been in Australia. Oh, yeah, <laughs> he's still wearing it indoors, bro. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's still wearing his coat. Yeah. <laughs> Don't embarrass us, bro. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah. So you get used to it though. Like you just end up adapting to it, don't you? But uh, yeah. I, because you, when we go to like hot countries, after a while, you're like, oh man, it's just like, it's everything's just, it's just so hot. Like yeah. you're used to it, so it's weird. But I can only imagine what it'd be like for you guys to go to Dubai or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just everywhere you go, you just want AC. <laughs> Yeah. There's um I wanted to ask you because of um like I was like we're traveling a lot through the tube and stuff like okay, that. Yeah. Like is it is it the weather that causes people to be like very like unapproachable? Oh no. <laughs> London <laughs> is new to bro. So we shot this video like I said we we shot this video with Zach that's hopefully going to come out this week where he approaches strangers oh. in London. Yeah. And he had a nightmare of a time. He just nobody well, not a lot of people were very friendly. Yeah, they just kind of all keep to yourself. But that is that's just London. 
if you go outside of London, there's some amazing people. So I, I lived in Cardiff before uh, when I was at university. Mm -hmm. And you're standing in a queue in the shop and, you know, you speak to the person in front of you and you have a great conversation and how's your day going? Yeah. But London, across the board, yeah. uh, I don't think it's the weather. I think the life here in London is very fast. Yeah. And there's no barqa in it, uh, in the time. And it's just... just this, this, this is like you're, you, you, you wake up and you're already running late for work. You quickly have to breakfast. You're on the tube. This is one hour journey. Mm. You get, uh, you're stuffy with everyone. You get off the tube. You've got work. You're there till five. You come off. Then you get home for like six or seven o'clock. And then you then there's the kids and the wife. And then you're like just having dinner. And before you know it, you're about to bed. And that's 30 years of your life, 40 years of your life. Unless you break the system, mm. which we're trying to do at Freshly Grounded, mm. which is provide jobs for people where they actually enjoy their work and yeah. their life and, and stuff like that. Um, and we want to incorporate, because so much of your life is spent at work, we mm. want work to be like a lifestyle so that you don't, it doesn't feel like work. Like it's your it's your um, graft that you're doing to earn money, but that doesn't mean that you come in and you're unhappy. Yeah. And uh, that's what we want to create. So it's a part of your life and it's part of your family's life. And it's just you have to work somewhere. So yeah. work somewhere where you don't feel like you're just passing the time to get that salary at the end of every month. 100%. Uh, but that is London. And unfortunately, yeah, not many people are friendly. Uh, and it's uh, it's not ideal, yeah. If anything, like, because for me, where I come from, Australia, like, it's not as hustle bustle as you guys, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I, I'd, say, I'd say he's like a little New York, basically. Yeah, I think you know? people have to compare London and New York. Yeah, yeah so when I, when, whenever I'm here, like, I like, because I'm a, I'm a tourist, basically, yeah? yeah. I'm just sitting down and I'm like, I want to just observe what's going on. And everyone's just like, oh, bro. like you were saying. And, yeah. and I realized, bro, what, why is everything open at <laughs> 12 in the afternoon? Why does everything open at 12? Yeah, everything opens at 8, 12, I think it's because we just finished like, the weekend and the weekend is <laughs> like that. Yeah, because it's, bro, yeah. I, I'm like, me and, me and Ty were talking about it. We're like, when we're in Melbourne, the coffee shop is open before you're awake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know? that is generally the case here in the weekdays. Yeah. Uh, but the weekends, you're right. That's just me then. <laughs> no, it's just, on Sundays, there's some kind of trade law that prevents most shops from being open before 11 a.m. Is it because of church? Is that what it is? I think that's where it originates. Yeah, yeah. You can't trade in church hours or something like that. Yeah, okay. And they've oh, kept to that kind enough. of... Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I don't know if you've been seeing politically what's been happening in the UK recently, but like, there's no trust in the prime minister yeah, because yeah. they're like breaking COVID laws and all this kind of stuff. And yeah, so, I find it funny. Don't, don't yeah. you find it funny? I try not to get too involved in politics, uh, but uh, politics is also the it's so sticky. It's like the few is like how economies and yeah. governments are run. So you do have to to some extent understand it, and it's just all a mess, isn't it? It's, I, I, it's just. I'm telling you, but the funny thing is, like, wherever you go in the world, the media is all the same. Yeah. It's like two seconds ago, like, something really bad happened. And then two seconds later, I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. This guy got out on the show last week. I'm like. Yeah. I'm is it, 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 uh, what you guys are doing is, is really good, man, like out there, because every community needs uh, people on different platforms. Uh, obviously, you guys, we were mentioning off the podcast, you guys have Bilal Asad out there, who's an amazing sheikh. Amazing. And uh, you need people like that as shuyukh. You need people at like One Path who are uh, providing like an, uh, an ulterior voice for media. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you need people like you guys who are just young brothers on the ground who can um, like project what the youth are going through. Yeah, be Almost be like a, a wall to bounce off of. Uh, but then you're, you're, you're trusted and you're uh, mature for your age and there could be a lot worse brothers doing those kind of things mm. and so there's a responsibility to be filled there I think it's amazing and like you said there's you know Australia is naturally going to be very Australia centric and so you need to be able to do that so I, I, I honestly wish you guys best I actually think that perhaps off air we can have a discussion about potentially where we can uh, have a, some kind of synergy That's in Shara, awesome, which would be really, really cool as That'd well. So, um, but yeah, man, I, uh, I, I, I sadly was planning to keep this episode fairly short just because of how like, bunged up I am. And nah, I don't know how much of a crazy. Good. I'm gonna have to men mention in the intro uh, uh, that I haven't got COVID and I have been tested. Because <laughs> so I like, caught this thing off my kids. So. But before we go, uh, it wouldn't be fresh again if we didn't play the, play the game. All right, and done. Especially done. when we have new guests on that we haven't necessarily had like in depth conversations with before. It'd be good. And so I know you're familiar with this. Have you? So how did you get the game? Did you just order it over to Australia? Order over to Australia. Ah, that's very oh, nice, man. man. No, I'll, I'll make sure that you leave with a few extra this time, so that oh, you can hopefully, it. if you want to hand them out or whatever. That would be amazing. This Thanks, version of the game, I don't know if it's the new one or the old one. We've mixed them all up now, but 
Uh, how do you <laughs> normally play it? Do you split it between each other, or do you just like one person has a whole deck and then the yeah, other yeah, pass it around? Yeah, fine. So the whole deck. Yeah, yeah so the fine, whole. We'll deck. do it your way. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take out the rule card. Okay, fine. So I'm just gonna randomize it. Do you randomize it, or do you look at the question first? No, no, we randomize fine. it. Yeah, random. But there's certain questions that didn't make the cut. <laughs> yeah, I like doing that. So I like like looking at the question, randomizing it, but then going. Is that something I'm interested in right now? Even even if it's not interested, like it's some things are too personal, and even like as boys, we look at each other, and go, you know, no, we never mean no. Do you know what? It's <laughs> meant to be like that. You're meant to be able to have those conversations, but it's not also meant for camera necessarily. So yeah, definitely it makes sense. Okay. Um, <laughs> again, I'm, I'm actually gonna choose the next one. Otherwise, we're gonna be a favorite. What are you most uh, What are you most thankful to Allah for this week? Subhanallah. Honestly. <coughs> The experience, bro. Like everything that he's he's let me see, bro. Subhanallah. Like I was telling I was telling Taha from before yesterday, him and um, his cousin, him and our, he's in our cousin, yeah. that bro, the world is huge. Like Subhanallah, how big the world is, yeah? yeah. And and like being able to have the like the the facilities to leave the country whenever I want to, you know, and go to a different country just on a whim, you know. Yeah. That subhanAllah is, is amazing, you know? And and having a supportive family that goes, you know, you wanna go overseas, yeah, it's been two years, you've you're a bit go, no problem. You know? And subhanAllah, like not a lot of people can say that they got that, you know? Are you on a break from the masters? And right now, yeah, we have we have uh, off summer off holidays. Yeah, so we're, we're kicking it right now. Mad to pick some holidays <laughs> in December, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, bro. That's what I'm going now, but <laughs> subhanAllah, but when's your when's your use your mic bro when's your winter our winter's um from i think june until august yeah june to august and is our how winter how cold does it get there yeah. does it snow uh, your 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 12 degrees yesterday was our coldest okay. i reckon <laughs> yeah your 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 hot day yesterday yeah. okay. <laughs> that's our coldest fine. i reckon fine i'm telling you but like i think that perth has us for weather fine perth they don't have uh, daylight savings so it's basically every day that like the Maghrib will add in at like 7.30, 7.45, okay. somewhere around that range, you know? But for yeah. us, yeah, for us, we're, we're like, <coughs> we'll get to the point where it's 5.30, by Ramadan they're dying, so. <laughs> so that, that, that's a really prevalent question actually, because obviously, what are you thankful to Allah for this week? And this week happens to be the week that you're traveling, so that it's relevant, yeah, isn't it? Allah, it's yeah. a big, big week. Bro, it's amazing. Uh, we went to Liverpool, yeah? So when we were on the train towards Liverpool, I just had a conversation for a random Scouse guy, you know, like just randomly. And I'm just talking to this guy and I'm like, like, you're so far away from where I live. And you're still like, you know, like you're still like going through the same stuff that I'm going through. Yeah. And you kind of like, you kind of like, you have the same problems, you know, like money, family, friends, all that sort of stuff. Wow. And this guy was an old guy as well. Like yeah. he's not young. And and being able to connect to humans as well, alhamdulillah, through like, like even like just being, having the facilities to talk to other people, you know, yep. and just like express how I feel and, and to get them to express how they feel for me to understand that. SubhanAllah, that, like there's little things that like, you know, I'm talking for myself here that, I'm not thankful enough for, you know, sure. like little, little bits and pieces that go on in my life that I shouldn't be like, like people have legs that they can't walk, you yeah. know, people have eyes they can't see. Like there's things like, there's things that everybody has and that Allah SWT is taking care of us in the background and we're like, we're not thankful for it yeah, and we're yeah. not like taking into account like Allah SWT is allowing every beat of your heart. Yeah. So whatever, it, resting heart rate is what, 63 beats per minute? Every 63, uh, all the 63, every single one of them, Allah SWT is saying, yeah, yeah, you can, you, yep, let it go, let, yep, let it be, let it be, let it be, you know? Like, and we're just like moving off of that. We're working off of Allah SWT's will and and we're not thankful for it. We're not thankful for Him, like, keeping us alive, you know? And it's, I don't know, I can go into a rabbit hole of this stuff. No, it's, it's, it's true, it's like, true. It's like endless. It's very true because, like you said, there's that Scouse guy, you've never met him before, he's on the other end of the world, but you're able to communicate and actually relate to each other's problems it just shows how similar we all are mm. and then I can leave that there and I can just move <laughs> you know like I'll never see him again in my life <laughs> so it so also goes to show about the fitra doesn't it about how uh, you can speak you could actually get through to anybody if they're willing to let you mm. because you know that the soul craves its creator yep. and so if you were to uh, 
if the person would, uh, were to allow you to conversate with it, I mean, you were you would be able to actually connect with any human yeah. in the world because you know that you know the fitrah. 100%. Yeah, this is amazing. You know, everyone everyone has that thing missing, that void, you know? Yeah, yeah. No one can fill it. Yeah, yeah. No course. one can fill it for anyone. Of course. Alhamdulillah, bro. Your turn. Oh, oh. Let's go. Let's go first one. Okay. We've only met, so okay. I'm not going to use that one. Fine. <laughs> That's actually a good question, actually. I've asked that to one or two people that. I have just met and it worked really well. well. I won't answer it now, but the question was what took you the longest to understand about me? And it's interesting because we created these questions with the idea of it being able to work whether you know someone, who, whether they're a stranger or you've known them for a long time. Because yeah. I could meet you like I have for two hours and there could be something within that two hours that has taken me the longest to understand about you. Okay. Which is amazing. Let's go for Never, that Okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's too hard. I think yeah. Um <laughs> I think naturally what took me the longest to understand about you because I've only known you two hours mm. is uh, what you're about because you can't find that out within five minutes mm. and so that takes asking loads of questions and as you know uh, from the minute you came in my car I've been asking you loads of questions and uh, so understanding what you're about I think yeah. like understanding that you uh, uh, what the culture in Australia is like for you and, and why you guys are doing the podcast and, mm. and the impact that you're trying to have and stuff like that so Alhamdulillah it took me the longest, but not because I didn't know uh, why you were doing it, but just because I've only known you two hours. Yeah, I feel like sometimes, you know, like getting to know someone, like you'll never know them until like, I don't know if this is a saying in the din or because my, my dad used to always repeat it to me consistently. He's like, you'll never know anyone until you deal money with them. Yeah. If you travel with them or if you, um, what was the uh, If you travel with them, do business with them or if business, you uh, live with them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, some people attribute that quote to Umar ibn Khattab, but I'm not sure exactly who whose quote it is yeah so that's that's so true okay this one's for you my biggest insecurity is that's a very good question I've I couldn't even guess that because I don't know you <laughs> my biggest insecurity I can't imagine you being insecure about much nah man be well, vulnerable um, be vulnerable huge, yeah oh well okay they put me on the spot I actually mean the corner as well you know <laughs> so, um, if we're gonna talk about like insecurities I'll always link it to like because in psychology there's a concept called your inner child okay and a lot of the things that go around the inner child like your reactions to things and stuff like that it comes down to it comes down to how you protect your inner child and sure. what what causes your inner child to be threatened you sure. know for me it was a lot about my looks like a lot of it no. so ears i was actually gonna eyebrows. say that i my guess would have been that your insecurity has to be internal mm -hmm. because externally you're not bad. I don't no, think no, you have. No. And you know, some people are like, oh, my hairline or like <laughs> my teeth are crooked <laughs> or something. But alhamdulillah, like I, I wouldn't imagine any of those to be an issue. So I would have thought that you would have said something internal, actually. Yeah, uh, a lot of them. Like partly, partly my intentions are another one. Fine. I was telling the boys to yesterday that um, the thing is with seeking knowledge is the more knowledge you gain, the more accountability you have. Sure. You know. So the more, uh, like the more and more I delve into the deen, which isn't a bad thing, because that means you elevate right. the in, like the levels in the stairs in Jannah, you know. Because the more, the more, like the more knowledge you gain, the more you love Allah, the more, the more knowledge you have about the deen and stuff. The closer and closer you can get to Allah Subhanahu Taala in the hereafter, you know. Yeah, and ultimately the higher chances of Jannah. Exactly. But you, but you're right. You can't, you can't use the ignorance card as much. Exactly, and um. And um, they were always like to me, like, oh, like you, you're a bit tense in certain situations and stuff like that. And I was just like, it's it's, it's like something I can't explain off a second, you know, sure. intention, especially like the boys. Like I was about to leave the podcast on a couple of occasions for one reason. It's because like I don't want to come across, not not come across. I don't want everything that I do to 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 be absolutely like just diminished by just one moment of weakness. You know, one moment where I looked at myself and I go, Fah, you know, well, I actually did something amazing here, you know, and then I kind of attributed things to myself and it was something that I wasn't aware of. And then I forgot to ask Allah SWT for forgiveness of that. And then I get him for it. I get, I get asked on the day of judgment, like, so all that you did, like, it's just gone now. Like, what was the point of it all? Because I ended up doing it for the eyes of people. Mm. You know, or I ended up doing it for like my own ego, my own pride, or what I got out of it. You know, so it was very difficult for me, and I like I had a lot of I struggled with myself internally a lot, like you were saying, but um, 
uh, all around. Insecurity is myself. Mm. <laughs> it's just me holistically. Nah, man. Alhamdulillah. But that's very good answer, though. Very good Alhamdulillah, answer, bro. Jazakallah khair. Go one more? Let's go one more. Oh, inshallah. Oh, this is a good one. If someone could see your actions and not hear your words, what would they say your priorities are? <coughs> uh, I think that if uh, people saw my actions, uh, um, they would probably think I'm really rude, to be honest. I am always conscious of coming across rude because I, uh, I busy myself and I try to busy myself as much as possible because I don't like myself when I'm not busy. You know, when you're alone, you can feel the shaitan more. When you're alone, you're not productive and, and stuff like that. And so, either side, uh, the 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 effect of keeping yourself busy is that you are not go- not great with things like answering your phone as you've experienced, <laughs> uh, or replying to people quickly enough, or or um, giving people lots of time, right, mm-hmm. for like a coffee and things like that. And uh, I think those actions can come across quite rude. Uh, I'm always kind of find myself chasing uh, myself. And uh, so I'd say if people saw my actions on my words, I'd, be, I'd worry that perhaps uh, that's not the best uh, way I could come across. Yes, right. uh, but you know what? That's, that's always something to improve on because I've seen people like Shuyukh and stuff who are a lot busier than I am. And... Um, they have a bigger responsibility than me as well because they, they, the community leaders, you know, mm. they people, people come to them for questions about their life and stuff, and yet they give so much time. Perfect example: the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That story about the old woman who asked, um, I might get this wrong, but like asked for uh, help, and then he, he spent so much time, maybe a whole day, like getting her errands done. And look at how busy oh, he is. Wow. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He's trying to carry the message of Islam. Yeah, he gave his whole day, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to this woman. To and she was, I think, uh, forgive me if I'm mistaken, but sh- not the politest of people when it came mm-hmm. to like asking for things. So, um ah, oh, this is the this is where the uh, nasheed stemmed from. Yeah, don't talk to me about Muhammad. Uh, I, would, I think that I might one? be talking about a different one, but perhaps. Yeah. But obviously, there's that story as well. Point being is that uh, someone like the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he would give his time when 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 uh, was it uh, uh, Ubaid, who's whose parrot. Uh, or bird uh, died, uh, or Umar, mm. uh, or Ibn Umar, something like that. Who's and he visited him in person and mourned the death of the bird. Awesome. Uh, those kind of things make me realize that actually I could be around, regardless of how busy I think I am, I could actually give everybody so much time uh, that it would always come across like I have loads of time. Uh, and and the, the missing element there could be barakah. Perhaps I don't have barakah in my mm. time, maybe. But yeah, that's what I think. Oh, about. I, like I'm not interjecting. I'm not giving you advice or anything. Please do. I know I've, I've I've experienced that pretty similarly to yourself. Like I felt like there's so many people that I needed to see, or th- but there's things that I didn't take care of myself with. You know, like for example, I didn't take care of my health for a while. I didn't go to the gym for a long time, or I didn't do certain things for myself. You know, like go to a ma- go get a massage done. Go get like, you know, go just talk out your stuff. Go play sport. Go do something. You know, for yourself. But for me, a lot of the times it's like what 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 helps with that situation is basically like just giving them full fledged attention in that situation. So if you only have fifteen minutes, it's like the like give them all that time, you know? Like for example, if you're talking to I don't know, your missus or something like that and you're just sitting down at home, like my mum is like Be present. My mom, yeah, it's just it's just present. Yeah, exactly. Be present. Like my mum's my mum's very big on she doesn't like me being out a lot. She she likes and I'm like she doesn't say like oh, I miss you or whatever because she's she's Arab so they they come around the corner and they go what do you think this is a hotel you just come <laughs> in and out as you please you know so mom will be <laughs> like to me side way of saying you know? so I I'll just go to my mom like okay go ahead no, my father my father in law <laughs> has so much love to give right he's so generous but the way he gives his love is not through like um, physical affection or through words yeah. but he will give his love by going out of his way to do like. Uh, to do things for you and um like you know uh, whether it's like coming to my house to bleed my ra- my radiators or uh recently i had to sort out some documents and he like instantly sorted it for me got um 
uh, like arranged everything and, 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 and came with me to sort you all out and stuff like that. So yeah. through actions, a lot of people mm-hmm. show. I think that's a nice way of showing love because uh, showing love because uh, you're actually giving somebody something that is really valuable, which is your time yeah. uh, and energy. And words can in some sometimes just be really uh, th- thin, you yeah. know. They don't always have the uh, the most weight. You could tell somebody you love them, but showing them you love them is a lot more powerful, isn't it? Yeah, it's like I think I'm the reverse of that. No, you're right. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'll, I'll tell somebody left, right, and centre if I love them, uh, uh, but I wish I could do more actions wise to show them because that means more, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, I feel you 100. percent But like, like you said, I think also the people's love languages are different. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, very true. So some people true. could really appreciate you telling them that you love them. That's very and true. Some people can go, oh, okay, he's just probably aerating, you know. But yeah. it all depends on the person, you know. So yeah. Alhamdulillah, bro. Like, all you can do is what you can offer, you know. And if exactly. you, you're doing what you offer, so if you're offering what you can, that should like that should be enough for yourself, you know. All you can do is all you got. Yeah, exactly, yeah. bro. Alhamdulillah. Bro, Jazakallah, I really appreciate oh, it. Yeah, yeah. Bro. Uh, thank you so much for, for for your time. You are back, obviously, uh, in a few days' time Inshallah. in the UK. So hopefully we can meet up then. But uh, let's enjoy some food before you go. Inshallah, and then uh, and then we'll send you off on your way, and then yeah. obviously you're you're traveling the world still, so tomorrow you're off on another <laughs> flight, Inshallah. Uh, so, but thank you very much for coming down to Fresh Ground. I wish you all the best, Inshallah, uh, with uh, Fedin Kamil up a baraka in it, and mm-hmm. uh, hopefully we can do this again sometime, maybe with other boys as well. Definitely appreciate it. Thank you very Sa- much for having me. Take care. Oh, that was just.